Hello everybody, it is I, Captain Kibble, and welcome back to Let's Play Trilby's Notes. In the last part, we found the chisel and had some horrific flashback to the slave. In this part, well, let's see what this chair says. Look, chair. An, invol an involuntary shudder went through me as I recognition John. It was the same chair from the living room in Defoe Manor, the room I had opted to sleep in for those five days. Well, let's get out of here, open door. Finally, I've... No, it's you, Terry. Hello, Abed. I thought you might have been the servant staff at last. My, has there not been any workers here? What happened to them all? Talk, Abed, about staff. You haven't seen any of the hotel staff since, since our first conversation in your room? No, it's very odd. I can only presume the hotel is closed and but it's still lie outside. Uh, talk a bit about O'Malley. I hope I'm spelling this right. Where's Sayabon? She said she was going to get a drink. From where? There's no service stop. I keep telling her it's not right for a girl her age to drink so much. But what do I know about young people today? Well, from the voice I give you, you sound like a smoker who has a hole in their throat. I'll go find her, good sir. You stay here and wait for the staff. I'm sure they'll show. He's gonna die. Anyway, open door. Talk to the door, or what not beside the open door. Mr. Railby, have you seen any of the hotel staff anywhere? No, I'm afraid not, aside from the clerk. Hmm. Perhaps they go to bed early in these parts. I hope so. Well, free drinks for us. Now then. Shall we discuss something? Uh, just trying to get in perfect position. There we go. Talk O'Malley about... Great. Do you know anything about the history of your family? I wouldn't be much of a history student if I didn't, now would I? Oh, that's quite lovely of you. I'm researching my family tree as part of my diploma. That's an odd diploma. Oh, that's ideal. I appreciate this, Mace. I don't like an odd question, but trust me when I say it's important. Did your family run a shipping company in the late 18th century? That is an odd question, but I do remember reading something about O'Malley shipping. I'd have to check my notes if I left them in my book bag. Could you meet me in my room in about five minutes? I'm in 2A, next to a bed. Ah, oh, yes, I'd love to, good ma'am, certainly. I'll see you there, then. But what, you know, ma'am, if you want to drink so bad, there's plenty of to go around up here. Eh, I better go meet her in her room. I just hope this goes well. The last time I met a woman alone in a hotel room, let's just say I should have hid my wallet in the mini-fridge. You know what's odd? This is the only door you don't have to type anything to go through. Along with these on the stairways, it's odd. I don't know, it just seems kind of redundant to me. But I guess if you... You'd be annoyed if you just accidentally walked into close enough into a door's proximity and automatically went through it. Wait, she said... Damn it, I mean, does she mean two as in this floor? Or That's what always confuses me. When they say the second floor, I'm wondering, do they count the lobby as the ground floor or the first? Yeah, they count the gr lobby as the ground floor, not the first floor. God, I hate that. That's how I always get lost. It's like, okay, meet me at 3A, and then I go up to the third fucking floor, but it turns out I needed to go to the fourth, because they count the first floor as, well, the gr not the ground floor, as the first floor. You know, open door. Come in, please, Terry. You have the papers, ma'am. Must you always get right down to business? Unless you want sex, but I believe we're here to talk. As a gentleman, I must oppose this argument of sexual activity. How are you feeling? We were a little worried about you. I have these moments of illness. I have, uh, cancer. What do you want to talk about? The phone manner. Oh! It kind of interests me. I was really into the media coverage of the incident at the time. Were you related to the family there? This client of yours, the one who wants the figurine, what does he know about it? Well, I suppose I should tell her. Well, he has an interest in the occult, and there's some nonsense story going around about it. That's not nonsense. Something about the idol being a vessel for an evil ghost. Uh, he really wasn't really paying attention He started when he started tap dancing. Really? I don't remember hearing about that in any of the reports. Trust me, ma'am, stay away! No, you wouldn't have. It wasn't widely... Have you heard the story that Shelby was in the house? Oh, the irony. You've caught me. I could feel cold sweat drooling down my spine. Every fiber of my being was concentrating on not giving any outward signs of alarm. As Saibon spoke of my secret name with wide-eyed enthusiasm, 
Oh dear, you've caught me, Terrence Railby. No one believes it, but Simone Taylor insists that it was true right up until, well, you know, she got murdered or axed herself off. She says he saved her from the house. Yes, it was quite a hard time. I think, I think that's a little far-fetched. That's exactly what a bed says. Well, you're that man certainly has some issues. He says a ghost is one thing, but throwing Trilby into it just makes it seem silly. As far as the world knows, I've not been caught yet. Huh. Truth be told, I don't think a bed believes in Trilby any more than he does ghosts. He's so grounded in reality. That's a sensible attitude. Again, I don't think anyone knows I was arrested. Have you, have you always been an antique dealer? Simon, please, I came here to talk about... Let me put it another way. Have you ever been an antique dealer? Oh dear, you've saw through my ruse. I knew it. The outfit, the hat, Terry Railby. Yes, that was certainly not my cleverest disguise. You were in Defoe Manor, and now you've come here to finish off the ghost. Ma'am, I'm in, not a ghostbuster, Simon. I always knew there was something else in this world, that there was something better, more glamorous, just below the surface. Ma'am, I'm a thief. How'd you not read about it? No, I remember. Will you take me with you? Listen to me. There's nothing more glamorous about what I do. I live in the shadows that threaten to consume me every single day. And if you pursue this any further, you're going to walk and straighten the one. What? What are you talking about? There's something extremely dangerous in the hotel. I don't know what it is, but you've discovered me. Ah, Demon Lord! Oh god, no! Slender it! I'm sorry! Oh, great, I tripped that hole. Look. Ah, uh, Demon? The tall man looked just as he did in my vision, stupidly tall and thin, as if he had been taken in two giant hands and stretched. Nothing in his face or body betrayed any emotion. Yeah, betrayed any emotion as he approached. Good sir, I swear to god! Stay back! Back, I say! That's it! Falcon! Kick! Oops. Oh, I kicked Saibon. Great. It appears I'm going to jail. Saibon was out cold, but uninjured. She would probably be safe on her bed while I continue my investigation. Oh dear. Well, dear viewers, I think this is a good place to end it off. I'm sorry for the short part, but I hope you'll have a good day and take care. Goodbye. Well, dear viewers, it appears I owe some apology. I'm a big dummy. My clock, you see, was telling me that I had already recorded 20 minutes, but apparently my clock changed itself last night when my computer got cut off by that thunderstorm that's been going on for the past few weeks. So I'm sorry. This is probably going to look horribly stupid, but either way, let's get the rummage the book bag. Look, backpack. It was a perfectly ordinary student's backpack for carrying books and personal possessions. Open backpack. Under the circumstances, Saiwan probably wouldn't mind. I kicked her in the face. God knows I probably knocked out a tooth or two. There were a few textbooks, a half-empty water bottle, and a large folder marked O'Malley Family History. This, I decided, was my quarry. I flipped through the pages until I reached the information relevant to the 18th century and reached and read my discoveries out loud. <clears throat> mm, sorry, throat hurts. The Liverpool-based O'Malley Shipping Company ran for three generations with the family in the mid to late 18th century until the loss of one of their clippers drove the company to bankruptcy. One boat being lost drove to bankruptcy? This place sucked. The owner at the time, Jacob O'Malley, placed the blame somewhat irrationally on a shipping crate which family legend alleged to be haunted, and it had been on the ship at the time. Ha, <laughs> you crazy... Oh, O'Malley's are crazy. There are numerous tales of bizarre events surrounding this crate, and the story of the crate's origin is no less mysterious. Oh dear. It goes that a strange young man came to a carpenter's at the Liverpool dockyard with a very expensive looking har harpsichord, which he insisted that he be smashed up and the wood used for whatever purpose the carpenter desired. He refused to leave until the instrument had been utterly broken into its component parts in front of his eyes and the wood sent to be made into crates for O'Malley shipping. Oh, well, that's quite lovely. That was, that was a poor harpsichord we just destroyed. When pressed for his name, the man identified himself as one Jack Freyhorn. Oh, dear. The rooms, the rooms of Jack Freyhorn, July 28th, AD 1778. I'm sorry, dear viewers, this, this is boring to watch. I know it's a story-heavy game. I love it for the atmosphere and what it gives and the unique charm it has. But, I know this is one of those games where it's more fun to play than watch, that's why I link it in the description of each game.
But anyway, shall we continue? So, what trifle have you been wasting your father's money on now, Jack? Are you my butler? What does it look like? It looks like a virginal. A harpsichord, actually, in the Flemish style. Oh, I forgot. That's uh, it's a that's a piano back then. My bad. Oh, I suppose I should be grateful that something is distracting you from the occult for once. I fear you may be speaking too soon, my friend. Is he a butler or a friend? Oh God, I should have known. You and your silly obsessions. So, what delivery inhabits this magnificent instrument? This in the instrument as a whole is, for the most part, untainted by the ethereal realm. But its keys are what sparks my interest. Unusually, they have been carved from centuries-old English oak. Oh, that sounds nice, and that's the interesting part. It sounds real made. I will not be disheartened by the sharp tongue of yours. The wood has gone through many incarnations before being incorporated into this device. There's a good piano, it looks like it. Items of furniture, building material, in fact, just over 200 years ago, it was part of a wall. That's... Okay, that's crazy. A wall of a certain inn on a well-traveled road in Wales. The Unicorn. I'm so pleased you remember. I could hardly forget it, the way you have been obsessing quite heartily over it of late, and my steam's going off. Great. Sneaky, why? Your correspondence persists in filling your head with rubbish and about ghosts and demons. I count myself very lucky to have tracked down even a small piece of that history. Oh, oh story. I didn't see that. I know I've already told you some of the wonderful stories attached to it. And this instrument has had its fair share of mysterious th happenings. The usual batch of strange noises, sudden madness, and inexplicable deaths. See, sense, my friend! The curiosity of yours for all things ungodly has no doubt already befouled your immortal soul. You are a fine fellow, Wilba, but you have not a drop of romance in your body. I don't think this has anything to do with romance! Now, stop b browbeating me for my inquiring mind, and let us get dinner. I love you guys. That night, Jack was stirred from his bed by the sound of music emanating from his new instrument. He fir his first thought was anger, mostly because that harpsichord was an antique, never intended to be played. I don't know about you, but if you put antique on it, people are gonna fuck around with it. Quite a lot. I should know. It's in the gentleman's code. But then he listened to the haunting mel melancholy at the time. Melancholy tune, and felt his stomach roll inexplicably with fear. Who's down there? Wilba, is it you? Yeah, is Wilba your friend or your butler? I'm curious. You have a double bed. He dresses fancier than you. You two don't look related, but it could be a powdered wig. Is I'm confused. Take gun. Jack took the gun with him to confront the intruder. There's a double bed there, so clearly you're not sleeping alone. Better you just like me and inherited a huge bed, but something's off here. I don't know. I'm getting odd vibes. Are you two? Uh, are you two just on the other side of the fence? I'm not. It's not a bad thing. It's just I'd like some clarification. You confused me. Look, piano. The absurdly expensive harpsichord was reportedly partially constructed from the wood of the notorious unicorn inn. Had Jack inadvertently welcomed into his house the right evil of that place. Now that's great, but damn, that guy's a good piano player. Look, demon. The tall man was playing a haunting melody on the harpsichord. Except for his hands, his body was completely still. My, that's quite impressive. You see, there's one thing you don't know about a gentleman. We shoot, then we ask questions. You won't take me, demon! Damn it, Wilbur! Wilbur was a spa? Wilbur? No. Oh, God, no! But I could have sworn. Damn, you! I know you! You have. have. Oh, God. Please forgive me, your, your majesty, my, for my transgressions. I am a worthless, craven fool, not worth a second of your precious time. I beg you, spare me. I will redeem myself for my offense. I will be yours forever, my body, mind, and soul. The whispers. Huh. Thank you, my lord. Thank you. Identified himself as one Jack Freyhorn. This may well have been the same Jack Freyhorn who went on the, to form the, a bizarre religious cult. Oh dear. 
a depraved group of pageant paganist worshippers who were spoken of with much derision by conventional society. With my latest flashback, my knowledge of the history of the cursed would gain another step. Before the crate, it had been a harpsichord, and sometime before that harpsichord, it had been part of some kind of host hostelry in Wales. A name called the Unicorn. Why did that ring a bell somewhere in my recent memory? I had definitely seen something in the Clan Brownman Hotel that was linked to the place, but where? I believe it was in the same place with the chisel. Oh god, Cybon? Oh dear, look, bed. A neatly made bed dressed in chintzy fabrics occupied the corner of the room. Great, Cybon's gone. She teleported on me. That or I was. Or she went to call the cops. You know what? I might be in trouble. Look, paper. Victim 3, Freyhorn. One, the third man who desired judgment was Freyhorn, who had brought from those who made luxuries with the wood that was this prince's soul. The prince came and struck down the lover of Freyhorn, and Freyhorn knew the name of the king. Oh, so he was? No, I'm still confused. No, I'm... It didn't look like it. I didn't see a hint of it. In fact, he looked like a neighborhood friend at most. And Freyhorn said, I know you now, O oh prince. Who was the arrogant man? And I anticipate your wish, and I will devote myself to spreading the teachings you have brought me and the love of our king. And the prince was satisfied, and Freyhorn called all those who would listen, and they formed an order of blessed agonies that would work to redeem the follies of the men of technology. Well, that's disturbing. All right, dear viewers, now I think it's a good time to end this off here. I hope you all have a good day and take care. I am sorry for all the mess I've been in today. They're going to... Uh, they're gonna fumigate us soon. It's just I got my head thrown everywhere trying to get everything ready. I hope you all have a good day and take care Goodbye